Hey guys, I'm a fish guy here doing a care sheet video on the Serpe Tetra or the Red Minor Tetra. Uh, a lot of people will see these in the aquarium hobby and fish stores. They're kind of your bread and butter fish, so everybody he, or any pet store is going to have these. And the prices, depending if they're the regular or long fin, uh, the prices are going to range anywhere from a dollar to about four dollars a piece. Usually four dollars or three fifty for the long fin variety is usually what the going price is. So let's get into the Tank set up for these guys. These guys are one of my favorite, favorite Tetras. They're just beautiful looking. They're cheap. They do an awesome school when you get them in a school. So uh, let's get right down into the information. Four to six years is the average lifespan on these guys. Usually you're going to see about three to five. And some people have actually seen eight to ten years. So with the provided adequate care for these guys, you're going to see a lot more of a lengthy life uh, for these guys, which the more the better. So, Next, these guys get a roughly about 1.5 inches, so they're really not a big tetra. Pretty much what you see in the pet store is what you get, but they do get a little bit bigger like a bulldog, so you will see them get a little bit thicker. Temperature is roughly around 70 to 78 degrees. They'll tolerate a little bit warmer, but usually not a little bit cooler. Uh, these guys do come from warm rivers, so you want to make sure you keep that in mind as well, and that's a big thing when setting up the aquarium for these guys. Now pH is anywhere from 6.0 to 8.0. Now they can tolerate a huge range of different water quality uh, when it comes to the pH and the temperature, but make sure when you stick with one that you keep sticking with it. You don't want to keep you know, fluctuating the pH or the temperature or anything like that. If you stick with 74 degrees Fahrenheit and a pH of 7.8 because that's what your pH is at, just leave it at that. It's the best way to do it and that way you're not stressing out the fish as well. Minimum tank size. Now, a lot of people recommend a 10 to 15 gallon. I recommend a 20. Uh, just because these guys need to be in a school of six or more to have the you know, adequate, basically not stress-free lifestyle that they want. Uh, so the more the merrier. They might bicker back and forth a little bit, but they're going to feel more secure and more at home in the aquarium and not feeling like they're going to be picked off by a predator when you do have more in the group. And they're just pretty. They're gorgeous fish to look at when they're in a school. It's just a flash of red going back and forth. So keep that in mind, especially the long fins. You get a school of those, it's awesome. Now, when it comes to sexing these guys, the dorsal fin is more of a solid black on the males. Now they're gonna be more of a thin, streamlined, torpedo shape looking from above when you look at them. And the females are gonna be a little bit thicker like that bulldog appearance I was telling you about. And they're gonna have that lack of color uh, that the male has in the anal fin. Uh, now, there are quite a different ways on sexing these guys, so they can change uh, in some ways work better than others. Uh, that's just the methods that work best for me, but definitely judging from above and that top dorsal fin is definitely a male, and then you can usually see the females are just lacking some of the color. Uh, like I said, sometimes some of the fins just aren't as colorful as the male's counterpart, uh, so keep that in mind when you're looking to breed these guys. Next, like I said, a school are six or more, and when you set up this tank, Make sure that the first thing that you want to do is always the lighting of an aquarium. Now make sure that this lighting is bright, bright sunlight beaming down on these guys. They do like a dimmer light because they do have overhangs on the rivers that they're from in the wild. So you do want to keep that in mind. Also you want to have any kind of fine leaf plants, any kind of plant material really, and some kind of driftwood or hiding spots. The more of a natural aquarium, the better. If you can have like a twisted spider wood in there with a lot of different uh, roots and branches, that's the best because then they can hide and feel more secure. And also some kind of sandy substrate works best for me. Some people also use like a smaller crushed pebble, but the sand I find just works awesome because uh, then you can also measure the, basically the current of the water because if you have too much current, it's going to push the sand around where so it wouldn't with the gravel. And these guys like a sluggish to a slower moving water uh, just because that's pretty much what their nature, their natural environment uh, from the river is. So you want to keep that in mind as well. And that's pretty much what you want to keep in mind when setting up an aquarium for any species of fish is other fish that get along with them and their natural environment is the best way to do it. So if you're looking to breed these guys, now they are one of the said easiest or easier fish uh, in the tetra family to breed. I wouldn't say that uh, just because sexing them can be a little bit difficult. But if you do have like a school of them, a lot of times they breed in the aquarium for you uh, and 
it's just awesome. Uh, you don't even expect it. You come down and see a bunch of eggs all over the place, and boom, you got babies. Uh, you know, within a couple of days. But if you want to set up a breeding tank specifically for these guys, I recommend doing a five-gallon aquarium. They're short, simple, sweet, and easy. Uh, to do a water change isn't a whole lot of work. And basically to line it with java moss. Uh, if you have balls of java moss that you can get offline, uh, just take them, pull them apart, and just kind of let them loosely float around the aquarium. And what that's going to do is the serpes are going to breed on that, uh, basically kicking around the aquarium and everything and it's a little bit easier for you to see as a hobbyist when you look into that tank. Now next you want to keep the pH around 6.0 to 7.0 and usually the temperature about 74 degrees. That's usually the best and ideal way to keep it uh, to get these guys to breed. Now, like I said, they're going to scatter the eggs amongst this java moss or any finely leaf plant and you want to make sure to remove the adults soon after because they see this as a snack and they'll start eating them immediately. Now, depending on the temperature of your water, the warmer, of course, is going to make these eggs hatch a little bit quicker, but that could also lead to development issues. So, I recommend keeping it at 74, and you're usually looking at about 36 to 48 hours for these guys to hatch. Uh, so, that's usually the best way to keep it. Uh, once these guys hatch, usually free swimming within three to five days, and that's when you can start doing the uh, you know, feeding with the young brine shrimp. You can do some of the smaller microorganisms powdered yolk, powdered flake food, uh, they're really not too picky, they're going to eat pretty well. So, also with these guys, they're omnivores, so make sure you're doing a plant and vegetable matter in these diets of these fish, uh, they'll get the overall best health that way, and you'll enjoy these guys for years to come. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please post it down below in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. You guys are helping me grow, and I really appreciate it. So thank you to all my subscribers and everyone watching this. Also, check out my website, mafishguide.com, for all your aquarium supplies and needs.